Hello friends, in this session I will be talking about exception handling and I will be using a real world example of proper usage of try, catch and finally keywords of exception handling. To demonstrate a real world use, I am going to show you uh, system.io namespace and its purpose. It serves two purposes. One is stream reader and second is stream writer. A stream reader is used to read files from a system and a stream writer is used to write into a file onto the system. Now as the topic is about exception handling, I would like to give you a little brief about an exception. Unlike an error, an exception is considered a runtime anomaly, which means unlike an error which happens at build or compile time, an exception takes place at runtime. So to show you that, let's move ahead with the program and let's run it. But before I run it, I want to show you that here I have a folder in my computer system. And in this folder here, I have a file in C colon slash A and the file name is data.txt. Now if you want you can see the content of the file and I will clean it up a little bit. So it has the content in it. There are five lines. Now let's run the program and I will give the command C colon slash A slash data.txt and my path is correct under that path I have a file so it should show me the content of the file and I close it. Now consider that I am running the program and uh, I give incorrect file name. So here I am running the program again and I am giving the file name data1.txt. This file does not exist. and I received file not found exception. To handle that exception I need to implement exception handling blocks which is try, catch and finally. So let's implement that. So the syntax goes like this. So when I am trying this code and something goes wrong then you catch that particular exception. The exception was file not find exception and here I say now console dot right line and here I say exception dot message. So I save it, I build it and now I run it. And now if I give a wrong file name then it is giving us could not find file message. Similarly you can handle various other types of exceptions as they appear in your program. You need to test it at various parameters and handle those exceptions as and when required. Now to show you the usage of finally keyword, I want to bring a little bit more complexity to the program and I want to show you that what happens and what is the real use of implementing finally in a genuine real world case. So to do so, here I have a code. That code is going to write into the file at the same time when file is being read. So here I am reading the file from the same path and if I pass the correct path where file actually exists which we can successfully read then I am also writing into the same file and I am writing the content line 1. So let's see what happens. So I save it and let me build the new code and now I run it. While I am running it, I am giving c colon slash a 
slash <coughs> data dot txt and now I say enter so it read my file but the moment it came to the writer part of it it is giving me an exception which is input output exception which means the process cannot access the file because it is being used by another process what is another process another process is my read operation my reader is, is still holding an handle to the file and hence it is not allowing to open another, another handle to the file for write operation then how do we perform this to perform that operation we need to close the handle to the file when reading is done so when this part is done we need to close the handle so write operation can hold and handle to the file and write into that now this is a very tricky situation to do that finally keyword comes very handy and in finally we can do a quick test and we say if stream reader object is not equal to null then close the object so when you close the object you are basically releasing the handle of read from the stream reader object for the file read operation and that will let the stream reader object write into the file and now we build it and we run it now I again say c colon slash a slash data dot txt and you see that it will not it will not break the code for a while now you close it and as you might have expected that it should have written line 1 into the file so we go and we run it again and now here I say c colon slash a slash data dot txt and you can see that line 1 has been added to that which means we properly used file read and file write operations so I hope you enjoyed it and you learned something new today especially about exception handling thank you very much for watching and I appreciate it